What's up, guys? Alright, today I'm going to talk to you about making kimchi in Latin America because it's different than my experience making kimchi in the States. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold right now. You can probably hear it in my voice, and I'm a little bit less excited than I normally am. But we are talking about kimchi, and this is one of my favorite things. And that's because there was a period of my life where I was on lots of antibiotics, and I had to accept the fact that it's possible there would be permanent damage to my gut if I... and I needed to figure out how to minimize that. Um, your gut is a very kind of good balance of different sorts of bacteria. And there's some bacteria that's harmful to you and some bacteria that aids your digestion process and makes your body get more nutrients and and then there's filler bacteria that just takes the place of other bacteria that could be bad. So you definitely want the right balance of bacteria in your gut so you don't get like colitis or some kind of gut infection, right? If you take a lot of antibiotics, you just completely strip the um, bacteria in your gut. And, you know, then the anytime you're giving antibiotics or taking antibiotics or you're putting a bacteria in a position where it's in an antibiotic environment, inevitably it's eventually going to mutate and then you're going to have some more antibiotic resistant things in your body, right? So when you are on antibiotics, it's really important that you're regularly on some kind of probiotic as well. Because then at least, you know, yeah, you're going to mutate some bad bacteria over the long run and then become the medicine you're using will become much less efficient. But you're also going to mutate some good bacteria as long as you continuously replenish the environment of them. Um, it's just going to make everything better. So that's why I love kimchi. And the cool thing about kimchi is that it's not just any one mixture of different probiotic foods. It's pretty much any vegetable that you want and then probiotic added fermentation process as well. So it's, in my head, one of the healthiest foods that there is because you can customize its vegetable content to be like broccoli and cabbage and whatever. Usually it's cabbage and some carrots and onions and that kind of thing. But you can, you can make that whatever you want and then add the probiotic part to it by fermenting it. So then you get all of your nutrients and all that stuff, but then also the good bacteria that cause great things to happen, or at least cause not bad things to not happen. I don't know. I'm babbling. So, making this in Latin America is different because it's a Korean dish. It's used eaten in like almost every meal in Korea. And if you go, if you're in the States and you go to a place like So or a Korean, a, a bulgogi joint, um, you, then you'll see that like they, they serve kimchi with the sides of it usually. Sometimes in the American ones, they, they don't do that all the time. Um, but that's just because Americans generally don't have much experience with kimchi. It's not really something that's in the American palate, but there's a, you know, for the more refined Americans out there. Ooh. Kimchi's great. I absolutely love it. Um, and I think that's one psychological because it was, it gave me something to occupy my brain with by making back at a point in my life where things were very hard. Um, so to me it's like, kimchi brought me out of that when not, you know, not completely, but anyway. So let's go over what the ingredients are so far. Um, so with kimchi, you're going to have like your main vegetable base. And this is usually going to be cabbage and then other things in smaller varieties. So, or sorry, so you'll have like 70% of it be one thing, like cabbage, and then you'll have like the rest of it be uh, three or four other vegetables. So usually you have the major vegetable that is most of your kimchi, and then you have a kind of mixture of the other vegetables, the, the, like the minor vegetables in your kimchi. In this case, we're using Napa cabbage. Um, I was actually able to find Napa cabbage here, which is crazy. Um, they have a store in Nicaragua called La Colonia, and that's where I got like two of these ingredients that would have been hard to find. Um, because you would normally have a hard time finding the Napa cabbage, and then you would also have a hard time finding the fish sauce. And fish sauce, like, it, I don't know. It, it's weird and it doesn't taste good by itself, but it really makes kimchi quite good. Um, and then there's also this ingredient, I think it's called gonchuri or something in Korean, but it's red pepper flakes. So it's the stuff you put on your pizza. Sorry. It's the stuff you put on your pizza except without the seeds. And finding a variant of it here 
in Nicaragua that doesn't have the seeds, I haven't been able to do. And I've, I've worked on ways to like separate the seeds and that kind of thing, but that's been real frustrating and hasn't really worked that well. Um, but yeah, if you don't, if you can't get to like La Colonia or some kind of hip store um, that has variety at the cost of expense, then you wouldn't be able to find the fish sauce or the Napa cabbage. Um, but you could use regular cabbage and just not have the fish sauce. You can still, it's still kimchi. Um, it's just not going to have that kind of unami flavor, which is kind of like a savory, salty flavor. Um, so you'd have to substitute something instead of the fish sauce. But everything else is really easy to find. So broccoli can be a little bit hard to find. It's not in every store here, but um, if you look around a bit, you can usually find one that's, that does ha sell it. And what's weird for me is that when I buy broccoli here, certain stores have it some weeks and then just not at other weeks. So you can go from like one pally to another pally and they sell slightly different things. I'm not used to that. I'm used to stores in the U.S. selling very similar um, things. So in this case, we're using Napa cabbage. Woo! Napa cabbage and broccoli. Carrots, radish, and radish, um, in the States or in Asia, you get like the Korean radish, which is like a big one. Um, but here they only have the kind that's like red on the sides. It's little, if you've seen it, they're like this big. Um, so I use those. But radish adds like the good, good, I, I like radish, so I use more radish than like carrots and other things. And then these garlic and ginger. And garlic and ginger is really easy to find. Um, it's also two really cheap things. I, I, actually, I don't know how much ginger is, but you rarely need much ginger. Like, you use a fraction of the amount of ginger as you use garlic. So, it's, it's in my head, it's quite cheap. And these are my favorite ingredients. Because another reason, there are so many reasons that I like kimchi. But another reason that I like kimchi is because um, I have a really hard time uh, I don't smell very well or taste things very well because I have like issues with congestion and I've been congested most of my life and I smoke weed and that kind of thing so that makes it worse um, but I have a not very good sense of smell um, and that limits my ability to taste things so I find that I really really enjoy things like garlic and ginger that have like a very strong noticeable smell just because no matter how congested I am, I can put some in my mouth and then it's like, whoa, that, that actually has flavor. Like, whoa, it's just, I have a connection to most of the ingredients found in kimchi. So these two are some of my favorites. Um, and then I just use like kosher salt. You have to salt your major vegetable. Um, so whatever it is that is gonna be the base of most of the kimchi, you have to put through the salting process. And what the salting process is going to do, uh, I did it to the broccoli here and to the other one so I can show you a little bit. You see how this is like flimsy? It bends. That's what the salting process does physically that's observable. Um, and you actually like, like I have to clean this more because it still tastes salty. And you don't want it to taste salty. The salting process takes time, like a couple hours. And what you're doing is you're putting the major vegetable, in this case it's, I've salted the broccoli and I've salted the uh, Napa cabbage. You're putting the major vegetable in an environment where the exterior is much more salty than the interior of the vegetable. So the water from the inside of the vegetable is going to go out into the saltier environment. The salt pulls the water out of the vegetable. And in doing this as well, you're incorporating some salt that's not, not enough to really taste incredibly salty. It shouldn't taste super salty after this is done. Um, but you are incorporating enough salt into the vegetable that when bacteria starts to grow, it's going to be an environment that's hard for bacteria that doesn't do well with salt and better for bacteria that does do well with salt. And probio probiotic bacteria grow really well in an environment that is salty. And that's one of the reasons that they're great as a preservative, is because you can, you can basically infect food with bacteria that doesn't hurt you and is healthy for you. 
And then because that bacteria has taken over the food, there's no room for the bad bacteria to take over in a way that that good bacteria defends the, the food from the bad bacteria for long, long periods of time. And if you look into a lot of, most cultures have some form of fermented food because, you know, most of our culture evolved when we didn't have things like a refrigerator or electricity. Like, even there was periods of time where salt was incredibly valuable because it allowed you to help uh, preserve food. And preserving food was a big, big thing back in the day. Um, but I guess, okay, then the other main difference in making kimchi in Latin America is that this stuff, right? The chili powder. So I use these with the seeds, but I also add this stuff that they sell here called a shote. And it's like a red pigment, but it's, it's an actual, it's like a plant's seeds that are red and they're ground up into like a powder. And if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see all the little like specks, it's inconsistent. So it's not like a pure red dye, but I, I, I found that if, that usually when I make kimchi in the past, like you want it to have this kind of vibrant red color. I, I don't know why, but that it just makes it more appealing. And because I can't find the right kind of pepper flakes when I've made it in the past, it just isn't red enough. I know that sounds a bit weird, but considering this is a really cheap and common ingredient in Latin America that you can find pretty much anywhere, or at least that I know of. You know, if you're in, if you're talking about a city, if you're in a town. Not so much, but, um, and it gives it more of the red flavor. So that's pretty much everything. Now, all I, all I have to do ne next, sorry, I know the lighting really sucks right there. All I have to do next is, I've, I've already cut these up, right? So these are the minor vegetables. This is the stuff that the, the paste that we need to make gets added to, and then you make this mix, right? And this kind of this, this spicy, flavorful, tasty goop, and then... You mix it with all of these, um, but I need to, sorry, all of these. I need to finish desalting these too, because they're still a little bit too salty. I let them soak in the salt overnight, um, but I need to get rid of more of that. I, I think sometimes you do, you do the desalting process to the other vegetables, but when I've watched any, I've pretty much watched like every YouTube video related to kimchi there is. Um, and, Magchi has really, really good ones. They're also incredibly popular, like with millions of views. Magchi is one of my favorite YouTubers, by the way. It's a cooking channel, uh, which I really, really like, by this Korean lady. Um, and she's good at explaining things, and it's, it's, it's well done. I like it. Anyway, garlic, that. Yeah, I, don't, I just figured I'd do a video about this, because, I don't know. I don't think there's any videos about making kimchi in Latin America. Just like there's no videos about fixing one of these sinks! Huh! I found one video of how to use this, which was funny because it was a little kid, and then he was like, "Oh, you put you put the clothes on the thing, and then you go woo, woo," and that that was the whole video. <laughs> but it was something. Um, let's see. Anything else about the kimchi? No. So the main difference is you're gonna have a hard time finding fish sauce. I found it at La Colonia. You're going to have a hard time finding Napa cabbage, but that doesn't really matter as much because the um, you can just use other cabbage or another vegetable. There's, like, Napa cabbage kimchi is just one form of kimchi. There are, there's radish kimchi, there's broccoli kimchi, there's carrot kimchi, there's potato kimchi, there's, like, there's so many different kinds of kimchi. It's tons, absolutely tons of them. Um, and then the other main thing is that you, you'll have a hard time finding the, the seeds that, or sorry, you'll have a hard time finding chili flakes without the seeds. And usually you use like a coarse or a fine ground. Um, and that's going to give it a lot of the kind of flavor and the red pigment, right? But you can work around that by using a shote as well. Although you're dyeing it, that's kind of frowned upon by some people. You know, like, a lot of people in the States will make a point not to buy something with dye. In this case, I'm adding dye, so I guess I'm lying to myself. I don't know. The chili thing. But that being said, I was at one food joint. It was like this... I think they just sold corn. 
like corn with cream cheese, that's it, kind of, and like salt. They had a box, a bottle, that was like five times as big as this. And it was exactly what I needed! And like, I looked at the brand and I could not, like I asked him where they bought it and he didn't, the guy working there didn't know. And it was, oh, it was so frustrating because I could see exactly the ingredient that I needed. So I know it exists somewhere where I live in Managua, but I'm not sure. Alright guys, see you next time. Ciao!